All right. Our next talk is by Mark Mueller, and he is actually a German that hates sauerkraut, so keep that in mind as he's talking. The title of his talk is A Design Approach to Philanthropy and Social Work. Mark is a UX designer, which means user experience for the non-geeks in the audience, which there must be at least two. Um, with a passion for sustainability, he thinks design has more to contribute to society than the newest product. Welcome, Mark. Namen zusammen. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the design approach to philanthropy. And let me clarify what I mean by design approach. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you that global warming or poverty can be solved by applying glitter to it. Unfortunately, design has historically always been associated with making things pretty. We have a client who says, I have this product, make it look great so that a lot of people buy it and pay me a ton of money. Um, I would like to challenge this notion and say design is a planning tool, a methodology to navigate the creative process. And by creative process, I mean creating things, enabling change. Because in my mind, design is about moving from an existing condition to a preferred one. So really, design is about enabling and facilitating change, which, in my perception, is at the basic premise of what philanthropy and social work are about. Now, in recent decades, design has taken on a much more human-centered approach. We do not just look at what is technologically possible or what people will pay us a lot of money for, but what do people actually want and need. So we immerse ourselves in communities and try to get to understand the ins and outs of a problem space, understand the wants and needs and the idiosyncrasies of the people within communities, and really try to involve all the possible stakeholders, people who are along the supply chain, people who will use it, people who will pay for it if they're not the same, and really get their buy-in and get them involved and engaged in the process. And having this notion of not just working for people, but instead working with people, so that they have a sense of co-ownership. It's a very collaborative and co-creative practice, which is what I'm really, really enjoying. And this challenges the notion of designer or social worker as maker and producer, but I would think it's more about being a communicator, helping people communicate visions, connect those dots. Now, oftentimes we try to face problems at a very large scale, which means you encounter what is called wicked problems. They are ill-defined, they have subsets of contradicting requirements, and they are almost impossible to tackle. And you have these systems that are highly interdependent, and it's just not a resilient system. It's like a house of cards, and if you pull one card away, the whole thing comes falling down, just like the global economy did once uh, the US did not do so well. So I would like to challenge you to think small, local, open, and connected, which is a framework that is inspired by natural ecosystems, where you have these small ecosystems that are independent but still connected, because working on a smaller scale means you have closer relationships. Think about the relationships that you have with your few close friends, as opposed to your billions of Facebook acquaintances. One great example for this in practice is the slow food movement, or local coffee shops instead of Starbucks, where people share relationships with the people instead of with this abstract construct of a corporation that supposedly has religious values. Design is about trying something, prototyping an idea, role-playing, cardboard cutouts, putting it out there, trying it out, failing, learning from it, iterating based on what you just learned. So challenge this notion that you can come in with a predefined solution and say, I know what you need and I'm going to prescribe it to you. Not working. Instead, Try this iterative process and 
try not to reinvent the wheel. The most effective solution for people will be if you reference patterns that they are already used to. If you require people to drastically change their behaviors from one day to another, they will not use it. And don't just think about what will look sexy in a portfolio or what will get you a design award. It's not about sexy solutions. It's about right solutions. It needs to be viable, it needs to be feasible, and yes, also desirable. And try to identify valuable assets that exist within these communities. It can be existing infrastructure, skill sets that the people have, or natural resources that are already available at your disposal. One great example for this is people found out you can get Coca-Cola everywhere in sub-Saharan Africa, but medicine is hard to come by. So why not use Coca-Cola's distribution system to distribute medicine? Thank you very much.